How do you make sure that the pond you're building isn't going to push water to your neighbor's property and get you in trouble? Let's find out today on Smith House. Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. My wife Veronica and I run Smith House Co. We're a develop, design, build firm here in Austin, Texas, but we often find ourselves building property outside of Austin. Both Veronica and I grew up out in the country and we really like these larger properties because you can do such cool things like add a very large pond. This property is Monarch Woods. It is a very special property out towards Houston. It's 40 acres and the owner really wanted to add a large pond as the focal point of this property. The issue was that we needed to see how big to build the dam and what to topographical line to grab to make sure that this pond was as big as possible without exceeding the limits of the property because we cannot push water from our property onto the neighbor's property that is illegal the first document that we get as builders or designers or homeowners or landowners is the survey. So this survey shows the extents of the property. This is the boundaries of this property. You can see that it's two tracks, two 20 acre tracks that we have put together. You can see that there's already a half acre pond on the lower tract towards the east side. And then you can see that the this property has a valley that comes down to a creek that runs from the southwest side up to the northeast side. The next thing that I like to bring into my arsenal of office images as I'm trying to figure out how to improve a property is a Google Earth's image. You can use Google Maps. It's fine. It's all the same imagery. The problem with Google Maps is twofold. Um, one, you can't pan down with Google Earth. You can actually get down on the property and look at the topography. The second thing is I like to be able to scroll between um, different dates. Um, it helps you see the development of the property that you're talking about as well as other properties. It just gives you a better idea of the lay of the land and where it's headed. So this image here was actually taken from 2018 because it was the clearest image that showed the property before we started doing thing, doing anything with it. I go ahead and I draw a boundary around the property just so I have an idea of what I'm looking at. This already has a pond, like I said, and it also has this creek that is a, it's a seasonal creek. It's not running all the time, but when it's not running, the pockets of water stay um, all year round. There's deep pockets of water. And this is, this is encouraging because it's telling us that the soil below is something that can hold water. It's a clay that will be able to hold water and we're not going to have to bring in any type of liner to make this pond work. This is the same uh, pond and uh, draw in the on the survey. You can see on the topographical line how everything comes together there as, as a valley. This is a U.S. geological survey map. This is called a hillshade, um, the hillshade layer, and it just gives us a really clear view of what the property is doing and it removes all of the trees. So it doesn't give you any new information that the topographical map won't give you, but it's just a lot easier for me anyway to see what it's doing. Here's the outline of our property again, and you can see that this water is starting to drain on the neighboring properties and then runs right through our property. Now, the critical thing here is twofold. One, we can't just build a big dam that would fill all of those all of those ditches all the way back up into the neighbor's property because, like I said, that's illegal. The second thing that we don't want to do is try to stop such a big creek with such a small dam that we just cause more issues with erosion. So we have to make sure we have a good understanding of how much water is running through there. But you see that this isn't a creek that runs for a long ways. It stops on all of the neighboring properties. So we felt pretty good that we would be able to both have the pond be small enough to stay on our property without being pushed back and being a, a large pond. And we also felt good that the total volume of water wouldn't be something that would cause issues with our spillovers. Zooming in on the property here, you can see that we have that creek that runs from the south 
west up to the northeast, and it actually goes under a culvert under the road. That's another thing that really helped us determine what maximum flow could be is just um, the sizing of that culvert. We know what the volume of that will be through that culvert. So we can size our spillovers to handle that amount of water and maybe more than that, just in case we hit some crazy rainfall that that culvert won't handle. But that gives us a good understanding of what the state expects to see from a volume of water flow. If that was something like, you know, obviously a bridge over there instead of a culvert, we might start thinking about different strategies for our, our spillway. But because it was a culvert, we felt comfortable that we could divert that much water around our dam on either side. Here I have thrown the topographical map back over my hillshade uh, map, and this just shows that there is complete um, agreement between the two. The, the hillshade map shows what the topographical map showed and vice versa. In fact, I think that the surveyors probably just grabbed this topographical map from the U.S. Geological Service, so I think that this was a uh, satellite image topography that the survey grabbed just because it lines up so, so exactly. And in the blue there, you see the existing pond. What we wanted to do is we wanted to add this dam at the backside of the property. So that far northeast edge, we wanted to add a dam. But what we didn't know is how big can, how high can we take that dam before we start pushing water back off of the property? So what I did is I grabbed a, I grabbed an elevation that ended somewhere towards the the lower southwest corner, uh, a, a, a topographical line that ended and wrapped back around before that, and gave us enough room away from that edge that I felt comfortable that we wouldn't be pushing into the neighbors. So this is 285 feet is the is the line that I grabbed, and we follow it pretty exact everywhere except for maybe the fin of of the shark there where the two ponds get close together because we knew that we wanted to dig that out. So this, this part of it here doesn't exactly follow because we were going to be digging that out with the bulldozer just to make a larger, a larger pond there. But I did feel good about the 285 foot mark, not pushing water onto the neighbor's property. Our spillovers are going to be on the top. The North side is going to be our primary. So as the pond gets full, any extra water will flow in a nice wide path around the levee on the north side. And it's a really gradual slope back down to, to avoid erosion. And that will take up to about a foot of water. And then on the south side, a foot taller, but still much shorter than the top of the levee, is this big drainage plain. It's actually a meadow that this pond will start overflowing and flowing out over the south side, finding its way back to the original creek. Again, in a nice, controlled, slow, um, slow slope manner so we don't create erosion in a heavy rain situation. And those two spillways will handle... Uh, I haven't done the math on it, but basically it's a whole meadow. So it's, you would be flooding over the whole road and everything by time that levee would be anywhere near um, capacity and you still wouldn't have any water getting pushed back onto the neighbors, onto the neighbor's road. This is just a final, um, a final rectification between my topography, my survey and the, um, and the Google images, the Google Maps images, just to see how it actually looks on the actual land. So if I take away the, the survey and the hill shade, now you can see what this pond is going to look like on the land. There were some key trees close to the edge of this pond that we wanted to keep. And with this image, I was able to identify those trees from the satellite image and say, yeah, this water will be at the edge of the tree, but it will not encompass that tree, which is really pretty cool, especially given the fact that it's full now. And this tree is actually the tree that I'm talking about is actually at the base of the water. It's like, wow, this, this really worked. And then this final image here shows the satellite image from just a few months ago. This is after the pond had been dug. You can see how we we built that levee on the northeast side. 
It's got a nice slow slope on the north that just goes through the trees as it overflows. And then there's that meadow there on the south side that it can that it can flow out if it gets to that point. And you see that we dug out the main body of the pond, but then we're actually pushing water back up the creek close to the, the, the neighbor's property, but will not touch the neighbor's property as it goes back there. And it's going to make some just great wooded um, coverage for, you know, wood ducks. There's already a, a, a family of wood ducks living back there. It's really cool, really cool. So that's, that's how we got to this point is the first thing we did is obviously get the survey. So we know the extents of our property. Then we got a topographical map. You can get that from the US Geological Services, uh, usgs.gov. Uh, they have an app and they have all kinds of, of different layers that really helps visualize it. I like the topographical lines and then the hill shade is just an easy way of seeing where, you know, what those topographical lines actually means. It's easier for me. Maybe you can read uh, topo maps, no problem, but I like having that shaded gray image. It's like, it just really makes it clear. And then we grab an elevation on where we want to put this levee on, at. We draw the extents of our pond, and then that's where we actually bring that elevation too. And then obviously there's only so much you can do from your office. I can't, it's not like I could draw this out and then me go get on a bulldozer and make this happen. Um, we had a professional dirt work company coming in we could not have done it without their expertise. They were able to take our ideas and where we thought this pond was going to be and really turn it into reality. The dozer driver was just a master at his craft. So, you know, this is a good way of identifying where a pond could be. It's a good way of doing a test case of if we built it this high, how big would the pond be and how far back would it go? But it will not take the place of a great dirt work company who can actually pull it off and give you the pond that you're wanting. I hope this helps. Um, USGS.gov is where I get that hill shade map and a bunch of other tools. Google Earth is obviously where I get all of the satellite images from. Let me know in the comments if there's any other tools that help you as you're laying out land and making improvements to it. Go follow us over at Instagram, TikTok, wherever you want to waste your time on social media. And we'll see you next time on Smith House.